So as I said earlier, most important uh, part in managing or approach to the person presenting as fever is taking a proper history. So uh, normally in our consultative style of uh, general practitioner or family physician, we let patient to describe their symptoms, you know, and then later on we, you know, ask, uh, you know, uh, and discuss in a way that we are able to gather more information to arrive at a proper diagnosis or direction of the investigation that we need to take. So normally, uh, you know, a patient would tell that they are suffering, and they would always they will not they may not come immediately, uh, but uh, they will. Many times they will take self medication, and these days, you know, everybody knows that they have to take Tolo, Azithromycin, um, Allegra, Cetrogen, uh, Cough Syrups, and all. And they will try these things first, and mostly uh, they come on third, fourth day to you, and then they. You know, so uh, and then uh, you always have to ask what more. I mean, many times fever is a you know predominant symptom, and patients. Uh, you know, although they know, but they may not be, you know, consciously telling you the other associated symptoms. So uh, it is important to ask them, do you have any other symptoms, anything more you want to tell or, you know, any other symptoms in other part of body. If they still do not, you know, come out, then you have to ask, you can, you know, you can from observation itself, if somebody has running nose, somebody is coughing, uh, somebody is, uh, is in pain. Then uh, you know you, have, you can ask: Do you have any problem in, in, in throat, or do you have cough? Uh, do you have uh, uh, any problem with your digestion? And then they come out that okay, I have some problem with digestion. Last night I had loose motions, for example, and I won vomited once. So uh, many times the patients may not give due uh, uh, due uh, you know importance to other symptoms, but these are very very important. And then you have to ask, ask, do you have any, you know, and, and always uh, uh, you have to take thorough exam, thorough history. So, you know, system wise, you know, to look at the source. If the patient does not tell, you always have to ask for the history. You have any symptom in your you know, in passing in your urine, any pain. Uh, so these are important things uh, to be, you know, uh, source of inf infection is very important. Patients may complain of body ache, so it is muscle pain, it is is it bone pain, it is back pain, is it headache? So these are the things you have to be mindful uh, when the patient tells his or her story. Uh, and uh, then I mean things like did did they eat from outside? Have they travel outside? Uh, now recently in the COVID environment, always ask because even we see the common cold and symptoms. The general seasonal viral fever, they are contracted essentially during you know a public place like you know workplace, office, or public transport, or you know travel outside uh, locality, or eating from outside. So you know these are the common things that we have to be mindful uh, in cases of you know fever, and uh, often this gives you a good. Uh, insight into what could be the cause, for probable re reason for the fever, and uh, only when you know there are uh, the fever does not subside with the, uh, and then you have to you can diagnose. Uh, sorry, you can send for investigations. And normally, I would I would I I do not ask my patients to do investigation on the very first day. I would give them empirical symptomatic treatment. I may like to use a you know community antibiotic, commonly used broad spectrum antibiotic. Uh, but normally, I would not investigate them immediately and you know ask them to come back to third or fourth day if they have a you know, persistent fever. Of course, with you know people with respiratory symptoms these days, uh, I I uh, I advise strictly for you know COVID these days, irrespective. Uh, that that the numbers of cases are coming down in our area of uh, uh, clinic. So uh, I have not seen any COVID patient for past uh, two months. I would say June and July, and whereas in March I was uh, flooded with patients, and teleconsultations going up to seventy to one twenty, something like that. 
so uh, it all depends on the common trends of the illnesses that you are getting and uh, you have to use your judgment of your uh, mind uh, your knowledge and also use common sense so what all could be the reason so normally i would advise even if i write investigation i advise patients to do test after 3 days so uh, after 3 days uh, my common investigation that i advise cvc you know blood count crp these days because of uh, covid and uh, at times you know if it looks like uh, you know the fever is persisting beyond 5 6 days then you know it is always useful to do uh uh I do uh, and, and test for typhoid uh, uh dengue is also very common in our area this year it is not very low uh, uh, very uh, you know, instance is low but still uh, typhoid malaria dengue uh, and urine infection i would focus apart from the complete blood count so these are my initial investigations for uh, fever and then we uh, you know mostly most of the times i would say 95% of the time patients uh, will uh so but rarely yes uh, somebody commented uh, dr wasim ectasial fever uh, yes it is common uh, but it may be endemic in different parts of india and uh, it is important to keep this thing because in mind because this is uh, in this kind of fevers uh, this kind of cause ectasial diseases are you know common up to it in research done by uh, cdc us in partner with cdc india it was seen that the 40, 30% of the fevers are being caused by rectasial uh, 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 you know origin or thing uh, and similar other bacteria which we do not consider in our common investigations so irrespective of investigations mostly these infections would subside with doxycycline if at all you know fever persists beyond uh, 7 to 10 days so uh, this is my approach in my locality and as i said that when we practice in a locality we know the common patterns which are coming or the you know from experiences of other doctors and clinics that what kind of fevers uh, you know in, uh, causes are coming and then we do this. so so these are the commonest things apart from this often on and off we see you know a patient with uh liver abscess for example uh, uh and uh, tuberculosis is also you know not very rare so you know tuberculosis if patients have you know recently i had a patient of abdominal cough and before that another patient with uh, pulmonary cough during this past uh, one month so uh, uh, tuberculosis uh, uh abdominal origin you know abscess and rarely you know i, I saw once a patient had splenic abscess um, so these are the common uh, common experience and when we talk in terms of uh, you know fever of paroxysm of unknown origin then uh, we have to do other test and in there you know fever is not subsiding always better to add x ray chest and ultrasound abdomen and beyond that i mean if you're not still able to determine cause of fever and fever persist then you have to do other test higher test like ct scan of abdomen and most of the time uh, even if it is malignant it originates from uh, you know uh, abdominal source lungs and, uh, you know chest and abdomen are the main sources of you know infection whether it is abscess whether it's uh, uh, malignancy uh, so doing a ct scan of chest and uh, abdomen is uh, very helpful for example the case of uh, splenic abscess which i saw was diagnosed after uh, ct scan because uh, that was not uh, very evolved when uh, ultrasound was done and it was not picked up on ultrasound and other causes with acute cholecystitis they would have very you know typical symptoms of pain abdomen uh, along with fever vomiting and other symptoms so uh, even uh, ureteric colic will have severe pain uti will have you know urinary 
symptoms and uh, uh, you know different you know where exactly the pain is originating where it is going to these are all important uh, if it is uh, you know concentrated around the uh, lower pelvis so you know in women there may be pid and all and other similar associated symptoms of the charge and uh, and uh, uh there is also something called uh, uh, uh drug induced uh, drug induced uh, and the uh, list of drugs which may cause uh, uh fever and uh, some of the drugs i can tell you like uh, uh, uh allo in all heparin uh, uh isoniazid you know, uh, methyl dopa these are some of the drugs i mean you can find li- list in the literature but these are some of the drugs which may cause uh, drug induced and similarly you know systemic inflammatory uh, diseases and autoimmune diseases Uh, like SLE and all are also important. So also important to investigate in case you know fever persists and people have you know rheumatological rheumatological uh, symptoms and presentations. So social history, you know, whether they have you know drug use or their sexual practices, any history of uh, you know heart surgery or past history of transplant. Uh, always, always you have to ask about their you know, history of sugar, thyroid, or any any kind of you know even a compromise. Uh, so these are the important history from the you know social and past history perspective, and uh, this is one of the approach of you know looking at the cause of fever. So you know from top to bottom approach. So you see meningitis, which is may present as headache, neck stiffness, photophobia, sinusitis. the sinuses are tender itis pain in ear pharyngitis is common in sore throat uh, pneumonia cough uh, breathing discomfort endocarditis recent dental or other invasive gastrointestinal or gastro urinary procedures back pain new skin lesions etc this could be no so then abdominal uh processes then you to see for pain Change in bowel habits, nausea, vomiting, urinary tract infection, pelvic infections. As I said, talked about uh, PID, prostatitis is also very common among elderly. Even younger people may suffer from prostatitis. Perirectal abscess. So perirectal area is very prone for uh, you know boils and abscesses. Cellulitis. Yesterday I saw a patient who had you know uh, abscess with cellulitis. Or, Which is probably would have originated from polycholitis. Uh, it's like drainage and antibiotic and joint infections, pain, warm swelling. So I uh, talked about rheumatological infections and uh, hospitalized patients, of course, local IV catheterized infections person. So always important in hospitalized patients to check for uh, you know central lines and uh, because they are often found to be full of. First and all, so this is a top to bottom approach. We start from pain and then look towards, uh, you know, in the body, the bottom, and physical examination is uh, always important. Uh, uh, examination of mouth, I mean, for example, observing, you know, what kind of discomfort patient is suffering from. Uh, examination of chest is very very important. The patient and sharing, local examination is very very important. uh uh and uh, uh one of the commonest causes of you know fever is recently i realized in my practice is dental abscess because uh, i had a patient who uh, uh, was uh, diabetic and uh, he was having fever you know low grade fever for 2 3 months you know every day he said that you know i have to take some paracetamol so fever was not and there was no obvious source but later when we you know uh, he had some dental issues and 
x ray was done for the you know uh, by the dentist then there was a abscess you know at the, the root of uh, teeth and that was causing the cause of the so dental abscess in india we have very poor oral and dental hygiene so always consider dental abscess you know look at look into the mouth ask to show the teeth ask if they have any dental symptoms or they have done any dental uh, procedures recently and th those could be you know reason for uh, persistent fever also so dental abscesses many times we are not aware because uh, we consider it is a different uh, department but for probably practice perspective it is important that we look into mouth properly not just throat tongue but also the teeth and gums